Hi, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and I'm excited to present a training that I had for my Patreon members one year ago. This one's on Manual J, what not to do. In this two-part series, I'm gonna cover many things that I see contractors and salespeople in the HVAC industry do when they're doing residential load calcs. Without further ado, here's part one. So first item. Right off the bat, we do not use Manual J for commercial or light commercial applications. If you're gonna do commercial applications, whether it's with software or longhand or anything along those lines, you're gonna use Manual N. Manual N is commercial load calculations. It's the equivalent for the commercial loads. So this would be everything from IT rooms to kitchens to restaurants, schools, um, commercial applications. All of that runs through manual N. Don't use manual J. We're not gonna account for things that are gonna be on all the time like uh, lighting or the number of people a lot different in a load calculation for uh, commercial manual N than it is manual J. Don't use it for commercial. All right, next one. This should be obvious, but gotta, gotta tell everybody because I still see it out there. Do not design for record-breaking weather conditions, okay? We design using Table 1A or of course 1B if you're out in um, the dry part of the country or microclimates, even the really moist part of the country is like Hawaii or Miami, right? Um, there's different uh, design temperatures. That's really the 99% design temperature. Meaning if you add up all the hours that it's at that temperature or above in cooling, then it would equal 3.65 days total. So we design around the 99% design temperature. If you design around 99.9 .9 or something, you're gonna drastically oversize it for no reason. And you're gonna have really big problems uh, under part load conditions, okay? So we have to stop somewhere. We can't just keep uh, designing around extreme weather breaking conditions. When there's a heat wave, the system's gonna run all the time. You gotta make sure you prepare your customer for this. It may not keep up based on sensible temperature on the thermostat a degree or two, but it's gonna be comfortable because it's gonna keep removing moisture, right? Or in the heating season, we can add some humidity in order to feel more comfortable when it's really, really cold out and dry, okay? So really important, don't design around weather, I'm sorry, don't design around re record breaking weather conditions and don't add any safety factors to your design temperatures on the outside. Also, don't design around any abnormally low or high indoor design temperatures or humidity conditions either. This is the number one reason I see out there that we get mold in homes. We have high moisture content and we're actually gonna migrate that moisture through walls and windows and cracks and all this stuff creates mold, okay? Really, really important. Your design temperatures need to match the mechanical code and the IRC in cooling, 75 degrees and 50% relative humidity. In heating, 70 plus or minus two degrees. Okay, so as low as 68, as high as 72. Not 78 because I want it like a, a Jamaica up in my uh, my second floor, all right, from my in-laws or something, okay? It doesn't work that way. Uh, Got to design around normal design conditions. That's actually prescribed by the IECC, the mechanical code and the residential code. Every municipal in our country, in the United States, follows these codes. Don't assume there's no internal shading, even on new construction, all right? Or in this case, this is my home office, where I'm sitting right now, before I bought the house, all right? Took a nice picture there. If I was to actually do the loads without all of the shading that I really have on here, obviously the cooling gain is gonna be much, much higher uh, than it would be when I include insect screens and drapes um, or medium shades, half drawn, right? Really important, don't assume there's no internal shading, okay? Also, do not fail to take full credit for overhangs. So you can see this picture was purposely taken in the afternoon and you can see the, the, the windows that actually have shading on my home office on the second floor. Never mind in the living room on the first floor with that huge porch overhang. And that actually needs to be put into your load calculation software. You need to measure the height above, in this example, that picture window that's on the porch on the first floor from the top of the window to the bottom of the overhang and then how far the overhang sticks out over the window. 
we have tons of shading on that and the load is very low on that big picture window because of it. You need to take full credit for that really efficient construction feature. And the further you go south or west, the more you see this in the design of the homes. Obviously this is an old Victorian. We didn't have air conditioning in 1880 when this house was built. Um, so they had to do things like this. Um, that porch faces east. It's very beautiful in the morning. My back side of the house faces west, which is really awesome in the winter. I get a lot of solar gain and it's beautiful. Not so good in the summertime. We had a tree back there that actually had to come down. So that oak was providing tons of shade. Not there anymore. So make sure you take full credit for overhangs, all right? This is one I see all the time. Don't assume that the load for the worst case site orientation can be used for others. This means if you're using, as an example, let's say right soft and you're able to change the direction of north, don't change it till it says the highest number. Put the actual direction of north. If you didn't capture that when you were out on the site survey, all you have to do is Google the address. On Google Maps, it'll show you which direction that house is oriented. And you know where the, where the front door is, right? It's really easy to get the correct orientation. Now keep in mind, if you're doing new construction and you're doing a whole cul-de-sac, the load is gonna be different as you move that same style home around the cul-de-sac because those doors and shading and windows, everything's facing a different direction and the cooling gain is gonna be different. Now the heat loss would probably be the same, all right? The cooling gain is gonna be different, which impacts the size of your air conditioner, right? And possibly the size of the blower on the furnace if you're doing an AC add-on with, with a gas or oil or, or propane furnace. So really important, get the correct orientation so you can size the system correctly for that house, not the one next door, right? Do not reduce known ceiling, wall, or floor R values just to be safe. What you see is real, okay? So if you measure the depth of the insulation and you know the R factor, then you can multiply inches by the, U, by the R value and get what the actual R value of that insulation is, if it's installed correctly, okay? Now, this is my attic and it's nice and even all the way through. I had it professionally installed. I have 11 inches of blown in cellulose. It's about an R38 up there. Um, if it was not installed correctly and there's a bunch of air gaps and it's it, it's all wavy, you gotta take an average probably. Um, keep in mind if you have just 2% air void in insulation, it'll decrease the R value in half. So if I had it this and it was it, it, it was 11 inches of, in, of blown in cellulose and it wasn't professionally installed and it wasn't correct, I'd probably say it's probably more like R15. But don't just arbitrarily say that. Take a look at it and know what the real R value is. Don't just reduce it. Don't just say, well, it's probably not right inside that wall. So I'm not going to put our 13. I'm going to put our six. That's not real. Okay. If you have a, a, a probe that you can, a non-conductive probe, like a, um, a plastic uh, knitting needle that you can stick in an electrical on the side of an electrical outlet, right. And see what the insulation value is and what the depth is. Great. Um, use it. Um, if you didn't, you need to make an educated guess and don't guess purposely low to drive your loads up. Okay. All right, what did you think? Did you like part one of the two part series on what not to do with ACO manual J load calculations? I'm willing to bet you've probably done one or two of the items before you had a little education, right? I know I did. If you like this training and you want more like it one year in advance, head over to my Patreon page where you can join for as little as $8 a month. Please be sure to come back and join me next week where we wrap up this series on Manual J What Not To Do. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for joining me at HVAC Pro Blog where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.